Good morning, everyone. Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters Fish Bump TV here on YouTube. Welcome to the channel. Today we are offshore, so we have a fishing episode planned. And as you can see in the background, we are going to be fishing some ships today. Got my son, Logan. <laughs> Logan's on, folks. Logan's on. We probably got a cobia. Don't know how big it's going to be. We had a we had one that was probably a sublegal come up behind the boat and Logan dropped that. Oh, <laughs> I missed it. It is a cobe though. It's the one we saw. It's the one we saw. It's not a real big one. That's going to be a short or a sublegal. Yeah, we're going to play them down just a little bit because they can be rowdy. Now they got to be 36 inches to the fork, folks. So that's a pretty good sized fish. And I can tell just by looking at this cobia, he is not. He is not going to be a legal fish. He's feisty. All right, he is feisty. I'm gonna see if I can get him in the net without too much drama. These guys are notorious for being tricky at the boat. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to hold the camera and and net the fish. Come on, baby. Lead him head first in there. Rod tip up just a little bit. Hey, Logan. It's tricky doing the camera work. We need Marky Mark here. There we go. Oh, yeah. Got one. Man, that didn't take long, folks. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Now, he's going to be sublegal, but if you've never seen a cobia, they're an interesting fish. They kind of look like a cross between a shark and a catfish to me. They are good eating, but numbers have been on the decline for the last few years so they've tightened up on the regulations you're allowed one per person now or two per boat or per trip logan's gonna de-hook this guy got a big old circle hook got him hooked pretty much perfectly there we go that'll be an easy release now you do have to watch out they have got some crazy spines right there on top but I tell you honestly, I'm just happy to come out here and catch one. Even if it's not a keeper, that's still still very cool. That's what they do right there. They are notorious for being rowdy in the boat. What a cool fish though. Woo, there he is, folks. Beautiful little cobia. And like I said, I'm just guesstimating, but that's probably 12, 24. He's probably about 30 inches or so. Cool looking fish. Hey Logan, you want to come over here on the sunny side and do a do a release? These guys hang on to that boga tight. There we go. Logan's gonna take good care of this little cobia, man. That's the future of our fishery right there. Some people are awfully rough with them. He's gonna come around. He's good. A lot of times these fish they fight. They fight to exhaustion. Oh, he went, he's gone. He kicked. We usually like to revive them until they kick off and you know they're good to go. Awesome, we're like 15 minutes into the trip and we got one of the targeted species. Hopefully we get a keeper today. If not, I'm sure we'll still find something awesome out here. I wanna thank everybody for tuning in to our fishing content. If you don't know it, that's how the channel started. We started doing the fishing videos to kind of promote our charter business and then obviously our Boat building and DIY, fiberglass and gel coat repairs gotten real popular. And we want to thank everyone for supporting the channel. Logan's on a good fish, folks. This might be our keeper. Nice and smooth, Logan. All right, we're moving. Easy, smooth and easy. I'm not gonna get him this time. Smooth and easy, man. Smooth and easy. He's coming up. He's coming up to the boat. There he's he first. is. That's a legal fish. There's two of them. There's another one with him. I believe that bigger one is legal. He's close. I think we're gonna have to net him, Logan. We're away from the rig. Pretty good. Woo! All right, folks. Whenever, whenever you're in doubt, we're gonna put a net on this fish and just see very cool i can't tell if that's going to be a legal fish or not yep walk him up to the front the right. second one following is smaller he's close i mean hard to tell i want to net him just to be on the safe side though 
All right, I'm gonna need some help. Here, can you, is there any way you can't no. hold the camera? <laughs> if he surges, I need both hands. This is tricky. This is tricky. We need Marky Mark. Oh, oh, oh. oh yay. Uh, Cobia. <laughs> I wish I had a bigger net. <laughs> Hold on, dude, you're gonna have to. I'm not letting him do it this time. There we go. Got him. <laughs> oh. oh my god. That's probably gonna be a legal fish, but I just wanted to be just wanted to be on the safe side. And he threw the he threw the hook there. We're gonna let him kind of do his thing. He's kind of wigging out a little bit. Ah, oh, we'll put the measuring stick on him. I hope, I hope that worked out, folks. I ended up putting you in the rod holder. I just could not get the net around that dude. All right, we're gonna move forward, measure that fish, show him off a little bit for everybody. All right, folks, that one went 38, 39 inches to the fork. How many pounds, Logan? 24. That's a good fish, man. Heck yeah, you want to show him off a little bit? Sure. Here. That's a very solid cobia, man. Not too shabby. I'll take it like that all day long. One of my favorite fish also was probably my dad's favorite fish. He loved to eat them. But uh, all right, folks, we're going to put this one in a box, chill him down see where the rest of the day takes us yeah man i've got one on on artificial I was just doing a little bit of jigging while we were hanging out i don't know don't know if that's going to be a legal fish or not it's going to be tricky oh, just trying to get some footage pretty fair he's hooked pretty fair it's a big old hoagie on our tarpon on our tarpon setup, y'all. <laughs> gonna play him down. I'm not gonna net him green. Yeah. These guys are pretty bonkers. I don't know that we'll keep him even if he's legal. That lid is swinging around like crazy in the back. Gonna play him down so he's chill. Man, Kobe are kind of wild, folks. That's one of their things when you get them on deck. So you kind of want to be sure that they are no longer green when you put them in the boat. Or be sure to give them plenty of room because they will hurt you. And they got spikes all down their back. Well, Logan, let's see if we can get him. Yep, scooping on deck. <laughs> Open the bail for me, Logan, if you don't mind. Look at that. That one, that fish might go legal. I don't know. We'll see. Beautiful Gulf Coast Cobia. That one went 37 and a quarter, 37 and a half to the fork, which is what they got to be. That is a primo eating size. And you're allowed one per person or two per vessel now. So we've got our two fish limit. It is an amazing day out here folks just being around these massive ships is a trip we finished that rig there for a few minutes we got a couple legal fish off of it i'm pretty pleased three cobia for the day that's not always the case there's a lot of days you work really 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 hard for them some days you don't get one at all i think we may try one more rig but the day is flying by it's already 20 after nine and I've got some work back at the boat shop we can work on today. I know a lot of you folks asked about the damage on the cowling on my Yamaha's back there. That's just part of charter boat fishing. Uh, we trimmed the motor up a little too high and got into the, the uh, rod holders there on the seat back. But anyway, I'm going to make a video on that for you folks because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's got a damaged cowling out there. All right. We have made it to ship number three we're on spot lock right now we got our trolling motor up front holding us 
I also like to leave my main engines running just so we can bump it. Sometimes the ship will get in the way of the satellite signal. And I want to show you folks, I know back here, the fish boxes on this 29 don't look that big, but we've got two, two legal cobia, the fish box kind of angles up underneath there. And we certainly could fit more in there. So they're big enough. You know, of course, if we were to custom build another one of these boats for somebody, I could extend that rear deck a couple more inches forward into the cockpit and uh, give you a little more fish box room. But for our needs, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I want to be close to these ships, but not too close. It's another nice feature of this boat. You wouldn't think it, but offshore, you even be able to stand up on this rear deck and you got these little tow rails or tow kicks. And when you stand up here, you can actually use this back seat to kind of brace against. Gives you a little more fishing room, a little more stability. It all adds up. Pretty cool boat to be able to fish inshore and back bay one day and come out here and fish way offshore the next. Man, just spending time with your family too. Said Logan, he's growing up fast. Glad we can spend some time together. I'd like to know what you guys, what y'all's favorite kind of fishing is. I've kind of been surprised at the channel. A lot of folks have boats, but maybe not everybody likes to fish. Fishing is a great family sport. You can learn a little, you can learn a lot. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but if you got a boat, you already got a big part of the equation. For folks that have been following the channel on this boat, you know, we're approaching the one year of operation for our custom built 29 that we're fishing on today. And we have traveled 3,946 miles, got 447 hours on these motors. So we're approaching 4,000 miles traveled this season so far. I imagine we'll do more next year. This year has been a little bit off I think the economy and some other factors got things slowed down a little bit. We haven't ran as many trips as we typically do, but man, what a gorgeous day though. I mean, just gorgeous. And we're gonna be going back and I've got a bunch of other fishing episodes if this is the first time visiting the channel or watching one of our fishing episodes, but I will be cleaning this fi these fish at the shop and there's a real good chance we'll be putting them on the Blackstone back there and maybe showing you one of my ways we like to prepare cobia. It's one of my favorite. Look at that. We got got all kind of bait we're marking. Oh, ho, ho. look at that, folks. Beautiful Gulf Coast cobia. That one measured out about 44 inches total length on that one. But if you're fishing for these guys, you got to measure them from like their lower jaw to their fork. And they got to be at least 36 inches. So what we're going to do, there are several different ways you can deal with cleaning a cobia. Um, you can see there's kind of a bone right there behind their peck fin. Normally, obviously you want to start with a really, really good sharp knife, kind of make an angled cut right there. Now these guys, there is some meat. There is some meat up there, up there, and it's kind of an angled. We want to come right up there as far as we can and get as much of that head meat. But right there, there is a bony plate. So we've got the head more or less loose and we're going to plunge that knife right there just above their spines on their backbone these guys are really an interesting fish to me again they kind of look like like a cross between a shark and a catfish just follow it nice and easy and i'm wearing a cut proof glove you would want to be careful if you're cutting toward your hand and these were the spikes that I was talking about on these guys. And if you're not careful, they will sock it to you. So be super careful and it hurts. It's no, it's no joke. So we've made that cut all the way to the back. And a Kobe is a interesting fish. Their head is so big and flat. A lot of times I will fillet them kind of upright, if you will. So we've made, a cut all the way to the back. 
we're down to the backbone and we do not want to waste any of this meat because cobia is ultra ultra premium for sure they've got a pretty prominent backbone so i'm kind of using my blade to work right along and then we're coming up on his rib cage and what we're going to do i'm actually going to take this fish and cut sever right there at his spine and his rib bones a lot of times we may not do that but on this particular fish i'm going to do that because i like the rib cage meat and the belly meat there we go just like so now we're over the top of the backbone nice angled cut there man what a gorgeous piece of fish That is some premium, premium stuff. Now, what I think we will do, so I'll clean up our board. I'm just gonna set this half off to the side just for the sake of time. I'm gonna do minimal rinsing on the filet, but I'm gonna clean up the board a little bit there. And we're gonna save every bit of this fish i do not want to waste anything at all so you can see we left the rib bones on there i'm gonna kind of plunge underneath them very tight i want to maximize the meat we get off of this fish but i want the top loin to be separate from the rib cage meat so i'm just going to kind of do an angled cut right there we got the rib meat we're gonna have the belly meat on the bottom so i'm gonna take that as well right along there there's one more rib bone there we go now we will utilize this sometimes <laughs> i grew up in a family where you didn't throw like the cobia belly meat right there is amazing and in a minute we'll take a little bit of time and we'll get these rib bones out there's very little meat there but we're not gonna we're not gonna waste it basically you do have some pin bones i don't know if you folks can see them but there are some pin bones that kind of run about midway about right along in there that's the last pin bone so i'm going to go ahead and break that piece of cobia into two pieces now this is kind of what they call the top loin of this fish this upper section so this is the front half of the fillet and the top loin and you want to cut a fly you want to cut as close to that as you can but get that red red meat and those bones out of there so we're going to hug it really really tight you should be almost able to hear the knife kind of clicking along This was my father's favorite fish to eat. When I was growing up, they were everybody called them a ling. And they have many, many names. Ling, cobia, crab eater, lemon fish. Look at that. Man, what a beautiful piece of fish. That's the top loin, front half of the filet. And then same deal, you've got you've got the lower the lower there and we want to just kind of follow those pin bones and that bloodline very tight don't want any of that but you don't want to waste any meat either they have a pretty tough skin these guys these guys are always going to be hanging around some kind of structure, anchor chains and whatnot. So that right there, not a whole lot lost, but you can see that is red meat and that is not something very desirable. So this is still very 
good eating, but you'll notice it's a much smaller profile than that top loin. So we might cook it a little bit differently, but this is the premium piece right there. That is like the back strap on a deer. I mean, that is, that is the good stuff for sure. So what I'm gonna do, they have fairly tough skin. I'm gonna plunge through just so I can get a little, little tab there to grab on. Start there at the top. The trick is getting, getting a hold of it. And I don't mind if I leave a little bit on the skin because sometimes you'll have a little bit of that blood, that blood line or that red meat. So I left a little bit on the skin and we can even trim that a little bit. That can be crab bait, the cats will eat it, something. It'll go to some use. We may just take it out tomorrow. We have a charter tomorrow and when we do, we will a lot of times just dump it right back right back in the bay and it'll go right back into the food chain something will eat it good sharp knife is key and again see i didn't try to cut that crazy tight because you can see that red meat that red meat that is on there and i don't really prefer to have that now what you can do, one of my favorite ways to make fish is on a black stone. And we have a little black stone here at the shop. And what we'll probably do tomorrow for lunch, I would imagine, is we're gonna take this and we're gonna cut some medallions. It's gonna be about three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. And we're gonna cut these medallions and make some cobia sliders. So check it out. Hang tight, we'll be back in a second. We'll be having lunch. There's some of our cobia that we caught bagged up, vacuum sealed. We're gonna freeze some of this. This is some of the, the main fillets. What we're having for lunch today, not only are we having some of the cobia, the belly meat, which sometimes that gets thrown away, but I have a special guest, my mom. <laughs> this is Miss Joy. She's gonna join us for lunch and we're gonna make some real simple cobia sliders. So I've got some little King's Hawaiian rolls there we've got some avocado uh, oil this is just to spray stuff on our black stone i'm going to give this a little hit and one of my favorites if you've never tried it is the everglades it's the everglades seasoning very good so we've got some of our pieces of cobia laid out there now that's some of the belly meat that we trimmed off of these big fish and sometimes like i said it gets it gets discarded and that's a shame because it is excellent. All right, I'll tell you what, we'll trade sides there with my cameraman. Got a nice hot griddle going. Kobe is one of my favorites. It's one of my dad's favorites as well. We always called it Ling. Always called it Ling. That's right, Mom's, Mom's right. Dad called it Ling, but it has a lot of different names. Cobia, ling, lemon fish, crab eater. It's got a lot of names, but if you've never had a, a little fish slider, that's what we like to do when we just want something simple and easy. Kraft makes a garlic aioli, kind of like a mayonnaise based sauce. You could put a little bit of tartar sauce on there. You could put a little bit of just plain old mayonnaise. Smells Amazing already. I wish we had smell-o-vision, folks. You could smell what we got going on. It doesn't take long, these little pieces, either. Doesn't take long when you cut them in these little bite-sized nuggets. It does. It smells good already. I can't use the smell It smells good. Nana's right. She said her smeller is not as good as it used to be, but it does smell good. And if you folks don't have one of these little fish flippers, uh, I'll try to put a link to that in the video description below. But that is a handy dandy little little doodad there for flipping fish when you've got a little black stone. And so what I did is I put these on in order. So I started on this side. So I'm going to flip from this side first. I'm telling you, it does not take very long 
A lot of people overcook fish, especially when it's good fresh fish like this. There's no reason to overcook it. And the avocado oil, you can use olive oil. Avocado holds a little higher temperature, it's supposed to be good for you and all that stuff. So I, I like it, recommend using it. So, man, we're moving right along. And I'm gonna fix a little plate for my mom. She's the guest of honor here. And These we, little... we didn't have avocado at all when you were little. Yeah, mom didn't have avocado. Well, I don't it's even know we plain old all. Don't even knew if, know if we knew what an avocado was. No. Now that's one of my favorites. I love some. I love some guacamole. Some guacamole. Holy moly! And it's never better than when it is just right hot off of the off of the griddle. Good stuff. We just had a little rain shower move through, so if your water dripping in the background. But I'm not upset about it. It's been terribly hot and dry here, so it feels kind of good. Cool things down. So I just tore those little King's Hawaiian rolls in half. I'm gonna give this, oh, just another 30 or 40 seconds. It doesn't take long. Those are fairly thin pieces. And it will continue to cook a little bit even after it comes off the the grill there, so uh, yeah, you don't want to overcook it. It's kind of like a steak. Nothing simpler than this. Just a couple little. Ooh, I may have went over. May have went overkill. <laughs> All right, mom. Oh my goodness. There you go. Oh my goodness. You know I love Here, I'll hold your Hawaiian rolls. I'll hold your Sprite. Thank you very much. You are welcome very much. This is an honor to get to come out here and eat with my boys. I'm telling you. Now, the fish might be hot, but uh oh, there's a fly trying to get you. <laughs> Shoe fly. That's part, of living, that's part of living in the South. All right. Let's see what you think there, Nana. Hopefully, really, the fish isn't really, too hot. It's really, really good. It's good, isn't it? Mm hmm. You know when Brenda was here, she made what they call funeral sandwiches, big on Hawaiian bread. But oh. she used ham and cheese. You could use these on sandwiches to yeah. make a picnic or anything. Just a little dab. You don't want to overdo the flavor of the cobia because it is, it is excellent. Fish is hot, so I got to be careful. Well, thank you. Very Ooh, it much. smells good. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Look how pretty and white. That is, dang, that is good. You did that. That's good, huh, Mom? Mm -hmm. Man, that is delicious, folks. I wish y'all were here to t taste, taste oh, test it goodness. with us. Yeah, I offered to bring scalloped potatoes out, but we don't need anything but lean. Well, yeah. fresh, eat. fresh cobia, King's Hawaiian. I hopefully you folks enjoyed this episode of uh, Catch, Clean, and Cook with Cobia with me and my son Logan and my mom, Miss Joy. We're gonna finish enjoying our lunch. Couldn't make a simpler meal than this. If you're enjoying what you're watching here on the channel, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Captain Joe here, Island Marine Charters. <laughs> my amazing cameraman, my mom is special guest, and we'll catch you folks next time out.